Sapney gents back again. So, as you can see, my bike uh, is missing its fuel tank and seat and such because unfortunately the uh, the head gasket has blown on the bike. So, I've, uh, what was happening was the engine was starting to overheat and the coolant was being blown into the header tank that was just overflowing where it was just pressurizing the system too much and pushing the coolant out of the radiator and from the engine into the expansion bottle and then there wasn't enough coolant in the engine so it would start to overheat. Now I um, diagnosed this, I used a sniff, uh, a sniffer tool, uh, the liquid one, I'll uh, post a video right now and uh, what it will show is um, that the, the colour changes of the liquid when it detects combustion deposits with the, well in with the cooling system and it detects combustion exact gases in the cooling system it changes colour so I'll post the video now and you'll get a better understanding of how I diagnosed it This uh, video I'm going to do is not exactly going to be a how-to video um, because, to be honest, I've never really done a head gasket on a motorbike before, so I feel like I can't do a how-to video when I'm sort of learning myself. But I thought I'll do a video to take you guys along with me, and then uh, hopefully you might learn something on the way. And if you need to do a head gasket on your bike, this is a CBF 600 N6, by the way. If you need to do a head gasket on yours, you'll have a bit of a better understanding on what you might need to do and what tools you'll need, etc. So, all I've done so far is I've just drained the cooling system. You can do that by uh, taking out the drain here and then draining the system. I've also pulled off the uh, bottom radiator hose and round the side here because you'll I'll explain why in a minute because I need to take the radiator off. Um, also, I've removed the tank. That's just, uh, you take your seat off. It's just two bolts here. The seat comes off and then it gives you access to a big bolt here that goes, so you undo the nut on this side. The bolt slides out and you, you've got four pipes under here. You've got them two on the right hand side. You've got this bigger one on the left hand side. This goes to the fuel tap. And then you've got this vacuum pipe here as well. So four pipes one bolt slides out and then the whole tank will slide off of these rubbers here and you'll be at the same stage pretty much i am now so next i'm going to go ahead and remove the radiator on the bike it's really easy it's just a plug connection there undo your pipe at the bottom here the bottom radiator pipe come around this side and you just want to undo the pipe from the thermostat here thermostat housing undo this bolt that holds the radiator cap to the frame here radiator cap assembly and then i believe you've got a bolt at the top there you want to be undoing that and there's a nut and bolt on the side here and i believe once they're undone the radiator sort of will like slide off but i'll show you when i undo them bolts there and then we'll go from there so the radiator is now out so it was just the top bolt here do the side one here and you'll have a multi-plug that connects the fan to the wiring loom on the bike this is this was connected like really bodged up previously by uh, just a couple of block connectors but your one will have a plug there and you didn't you don't really have to take this off because here's the part of the fan unit and then um the radiator sort of slid forward and it came off this peg on the side so it sort of slid forward and then popped off of that peg 
and then it just sort of like you just sort of fettle it out but um weren't that hard and i needed to move the radiator because my exhaust stud nuts are very very corroded i've got two out already there's one off out around there this is the stud come out completely with that one the nut come off that one but these that one there and that one there and that one there are very 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 tight so i've um i've sprayed them up i'm trying to just get a blowtorch in there and heat them up so i thought if i get the radio out of the way i'll have a lot better access and i can see what i'm doing more so um however you want to tackle this um i suggest just spraying them up letting it soak overnight and attempting it but don't hang off it because if you snap these studs off in the engine you're in a whole world of pain really so you just want to be very very cautious and i'm just going to go ahead and spray these up some more and see what i can do fingers crossed i can get them out now i've got all the uh all the studs out i was very lucky they were very very tired but with loads of penetrating spray and i heated it up a few times like the really tough ones i managed to get them all out so these are all loose now and i've undone the clamp at the back here so really if i wiggle this i should be able to get the whole all the headers out of here you can see they're coming away there someone's been here before because you can see all the silicon there so oh i forgot about that bolt you gotta undo that and then i'll be able to pull it all off all right so the headers are off and next thing i'm probably going to want to do is get all this ignition this ignition coils and leads out of the way i want to be getting the head off so i'm going to go ahead and do that now looks easy just a few bolts and the side here fixed to the frame whatever markings you want to do just go for it and mark them up i believe these leads anyway are yeah so they're marked anyway that they're numbered number four and number four on the head so you don't have to worry about getting these mixed up that's easy enough all right i've got the ignition coil and leads out of the way it was simple just four little plugs i just tend to take pictures of everything um, or you can mark it up, do what you have to do, but I just take pictures of everything just so I know um, how it all goes back on, like, because there's four spades there. You could get these mixed up, but just take pictures and there's, uh, there's no way you can really get it mixed up otherwise. Um, it was just two bolts and the whole thing comes off. Oh, and obviously you take your, your HT leads off of the spark plugs and it all pulls out. All there's one unit like that. Um, so next... I'm going to remove the battery, probably should have done that to start with anyway, but remove the battery and then go about trying to get this air box loose and see how I can go about moving it back to give me some clearance to move the carburetors off of these intake rubbers and then it will give me some better clearance to take the head off. So I'll, uh, I'll be back in a minute and show you what, I've, what sort of plan I'm, I'm taking and what I've done. Right, so what I've done is I've, uh, I've removed this uh, which is simple enough that just these two pipes here they just go on there um and then just a few other pipes these little clips you can just squeeze with your hands and pull the pipe off and that little pipe down there clips onto there and it's just held on with a bolt around the back of the frame there where the two earth cables are so just undo that and then it will come off i tend to put the bolts back where I, they come from just to give you a bit of a clue when putting things back together makes things easier on the assembly um and yeah i'm just going forward and just disconnecting certain plug connections what, I've, what is going to need to be disconnected when you're removing the cylinder head uh still haven't got the air box moved yet and i think that's the next plan of action oh and there was another pipe i this pipe around the side here goes to the top of the air box that sort of scoots round and goes on the side there. I've just pulled that off and moved it out of the way. So next thing is trying to move this air box back. Right, I've removed the air box. That was uh, simple enough. There was a bolt holding it on around the side there that bolts to the frame. Uh, you undo that and it just needed some fettling of these hoses. 
as such and obviously removed the battery i removed the starter relay as well just to get that out of the way that bolts onto that there so just just remove stuff um just to make your life really easier to be honest and remove the like the cables that will need to be getting out of the way the control unit at the top unplug that just so i could move the loom more out of the way just to slide because the airbox slides out from right to left so it kind of slides out this way and um yeah so it wasn't that bad really obviously i'm doing i'm done all the jubilee clips that hold the air box to the carburetors there so and then it just sort of comes this way a bit and it slides out so it weren't too bad um what am i doing now so i've just undone all the clips that hold the carburetors to the intake rubbers on all four so i'm hoping just to move the carburetors out the way now and i also had to remove the choke cable clips on there and it sort of goes on there just slide it out of there just like a push bike brake cable end on it so i'm going to try and get these carburetors out of the way now and then uh then that's pretty much really it i can start taking the rocker cover off all right i've got the carburetors out of the way so i just grabbed them with both hands either side and just pulled underneath so i sort of done pulled it that way and it sort of just lifted the carburetor out of the intake rubber and then pulled out um i was first off just trying to pry one off individually but it just weren't going to happen that way you need to pull it off as one big unit and it comes off pretty easy actually um so now that's sort of out the way like so anyway without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and take the rocker cover off now that's easy it's just these bolts here you just undo and then uh that'll pop off and then i need to look at i think maybe this cover needs to come off take the timing chain tensioner off so i can get the chain off the cams and then uh hopefully start undoing the cylinder head but i need to take this off first to see really what i'm doing anyway i'll see you in a bit Right, so I've got the rocker cover off. It was just in bolts on the top. You just take them out and it was just literally just lifted straight off, so that was easy. I've took this uh, crankshaft cover off here. So I've got it in time at the bottom here. This mark is lined up with that mark at the bottom there. And my camshafts, these line, these have lined up flush with the, the top of the head. So now that's in time i'm gonna take the cam chain tensioner out and i think i'm gonna try and take this cover off i've unbolted it already but it's just stuck on there so i'm gonna take this cover off and i'm gonna start unbolting the cam shafts um when i take the tensioner out this this chain, uh, time and chain should go slack and then uh i'll be able to undo the cam shafts so i'm just gonna undo them from inside to outside just you don't want to just undo from one side to the other because you're going to just break the, the camshaft carrier so if you undo from outside to inside from inside to outside on very gradual uh untightening sequence and it should uh, not break any of these camshaft carriers um so yeah i'm just gonna the first things first i'm gonna try and get this cam chain tensioner off and then hopefully this will all go slack and i'll be able to take the camshafts out Right, I've got both uh, camshaft carriers off and the camshafts are out. Um, I've just propped up the timing chain. Just put some cable ties around it just to stop it falling all the way down. Just do that. And then I'll just sort of done that around there. Just to hold it. So now the next stage is to get the cylinder head bolts out. So there are these bolts down here. There's a series of them I can't. I don't know exactly how many, one, two, three, four, five on each side, so ten in total I believe, there might be more but that's what I can see and uh, so I'm going to just get them undone and again I'm going to work from, when I said last time, I think I said um, from outside to inside, um, hang on one sec, I've, I've got a service manual I'm sort of like referring by so let me just, uh, I'll have a look at it and I'll get back to you in a sec. 
Yeah, so I just looked at the uh, the service manual and it says from outside to inside you want to be loosening the um, the, the camshaft carriers. Um, so, but I'm, I'm referring to the newer model CVS, so I'm just using that as guidance, but it's just something I found on Google. So if you uh, are doing this job, I just recommend you actually do definitely find out what sort of sequence you start undoing stuff because... If you do it wrong, you can start breaking stuff or you can warp stuff and that's that's not good. So um, anyway, I'm going to get these bolts undone and uh, hopefully get the cylinder head off. I did notice there's a coolant hose. That one there is attached to the head and that goes down to the water pump. And there's one on the other side. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there. It's, it's right about there. And that was on the cylinder head also. And that goes to the carburetors. So just undo them however what way you want to do it i might actually undo it from here it's just easier and then just have to hose there but um yeah anyway so i'm just going to get these hopefully get the cylinder head off hopefully it won't give me too much trouble uh just just what i'd quickly say when referring to this uh the service manual for cylinder head removal it just says uh, undo the bolts in a crisscross pattern in two to three steps so that's all i'm going to do so i'll just go from corner to corner work my way in the crisscross pattern and then uh do it in two or three steps and we should be all right. Right, the cylinder head has been removed, as you can see. I've just uh, tied up the timing chain like that, stop it falling all the way down there. Here's the cylinder head. I mean, I ain't had a proper look really as of yet, but I'm gonna take it around my mates tomorrow and he's got a proper like straight edge. He builds motorbike engines and that, so he'll be able to tell me if the head's warped or not. Um, I can't remember what the spec is, but going by the uh, specification of the newer engine of this, you put a straight edge along here, and I think it said that if you could get the tolerance for 0 0.1 mil, if you could get a, f a feeler gauge under there, if that could slip under there, I think, with ease, and the cylinder head's obviously warped and will need uh, being skimmed, but um, fingers crossed that ain't, that won't happen. Someone's definitely been here before as well, because one of these cylinder head bolts, it was completely different size. So I reckon they probably snapped it off inside the engine, had to drill it out and tap it out and then put a bigger size bolt in. I mean, you can see these ones here. And this is the different size one. So uh, someone's had a right old mare at one point. Um, so yeah, uh, someone's definitely been here and it's not, not done the best of jobs, but I think this engine's quite warm to be honest, but I'm just hoping I can just bang a cylinder head gasket in it and fingers crossed. Anyway, I'll need to, uh, I'll see you on the next one or when I start, when I get the new gasket and I'll verify the head's all alright. But hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and coming along with me to remove this. It's the first time I've ever done one on a motorbike and it weren't that hard really. Um, it's quite a basic bike anyway, so I wouldn't want to be doing these new modern sports bikes when there's like wiring absolutely everywhere and it's just really, really tight in there. So this one's quite easy. Anyway, gents, enough of me talking. I need to go inside and have a nice cup of tea. And I've got a rotten cold as well, so have a nice warm cup of tea now. Anyway, see you on the next one. Right, so it's the next day of the uh, project and there's not been such good news so um where i last left this the um the cylinder head obviously i took that off hoping just to be doing a head gasket but it turns out i don't know if you can really see in here but where the bore is let's get the light on there you can see there on number three it's got loads of pit in there on the cylinder wall so um, I'm not too sure how this has happened because it's definitely the head on this motorbike's been off previously So this could be caused by where the head gasket may have failed before and then there's loads of water sitting on there It's sort of like the um, the, the cylinder finish is sort of pitted that way It's sort of like in a way corroded, but it's it's corroded on cylinder 3 Cylinder 2 you can see up there. I can feel uh, focus. It's not the best camera um, You can just and you can feel it all on the fingernail so it's definitely too deep. Like, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's just really in what I'm trying to get out here. The engine's knackered because it, this will need rehoning and 
whether you can hone it out, I don't know. So, uh, I've, I've ordered an engine, I've ordered a second hand engine with 30,000 miles on it for 250 quid, so it's worked out a bit dearer than I thought or hoped, but it is what it is. I'm not going to start stripping all this apart, just have it honed and then hope, um, hoping it's going to sort of hone out. I'm not too sure, but there's also other things where, um, the uh, previously, like I mean, the cylinder head here. So these are the cylinder head bolts, and one of the bolts is this size. So it's a completely different bolt. And what's happened was, I reckon that one of these bolts had snapped off in the block, and they've had to drill it out and put this bolt in there, which is a size slightly bigger. And what that's done is, it was too long. And as you can see under here, it actually come out the bottom of the block there and it was causing an oil leak. You can see like all the oil in the front of the engine. So that's another thing. I mean, the block's damaged, the cylinder walls are damaged and beyond repair in a way. And it's just sort of like too much to warrant having all this repaired. So I thought for the sake of 250 quid, hopefully, fingers crossed, the second hand engine that's on its way. Will um will suffice and then be all right. So really, this is from a head gasket video has turned into a going to be an engine change video now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the head back on. I'm going to bolt it all down and sort of show you um in a way how to reassemble. But it's going to be a light reassembly. It ain't as I said from the beginning of the video. It ain't really going to be a how to. Um, there was some information I got wrong because I was looking at the um, repair instructions for the old or for the newer model CBF 600 um, and I managed to find repair instructions on Google for the Honda Hornet which is the same engine but it's just slightly I mean the CBF 600 detuned it's got a slightly um, detuned like cylinder head and stuff like that whereas the Honda Hornet um, is exactly the same motor but it's just higher spec up so it has more horsepower um but the beauty of that is is that it should fingers crossed hopefully have all the same torque values and it has the same timing marks and it's it's it, the repair instructions are very very close or pretty much exactly the same as what this engine would be so um enough talking i'm just going to get the cylinder head back on now talked down and then uh i'm just going to put the cams and all that back in and then uh when the new engine arrives i can start unbolting this engine and uh, hopefully put the new or the the new engine back in, and fingers crossed it'll all be all be good. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on and see how we go. Right, so that's the cylinder head back on. Um, as you're putting the cylinder head up, I just feed this through, obviously, and uh, just try and make sure that it stays on the bottom gear at the bottom there. I also took the cam chain um, guide. Uh, for the tensioner guide uh, off because it hangs out the bottom of the cylinder head quite a lot and I didn't want to snap it off because they are like 50 odd quid so if you do do this job I recommend taking that out it's only literally one nut there and the whole lot slight curb comes this way and then up and out um, so I've talked up the cylinder head um, it says it goes up to 47 newton meters and you've got to do it within three stages and the repair instructions as I was referring to with the uh, Honda Hornet repair instructions, which as I said earlier, is the same engine as this. Uh, it says it goes up to 47 newton meters. So 47 newton meters in a crisscross pattern um, and do it in two to three stages. Uh, I'm even more happy that I went and forward to buy a uh, second hand engine for this because whilst talking up this head bolt here, uh, as I was getting probably to about 30 newton meters, it just went all of a sudden loose. So it stripped out the thread also in this, um, in the block. So there's, there's two bad threads now in the block. One that's, this one did actually tighten up, but the, the bolts come out through the bottom. As I said earlier, it's the wrong bolt someone's used. So really this has just been uh, abused really when being put back together. Cause this has certainly had a cylinder head gasket before and I'm just glad that I just went forward and bought a new engine. So, um, yeah, but I'll, uh, the next stage is to get the cams back in and uh, I'll show you about the timing because uh, when I said earlier in terms of removal, I believe I uh, got the timing wrong 
the information that I said, so I'll show you the proper way when I get the cams back in. All right, so the camshafts are back in. So what I did was I uh, I made sure that the crankshaft was on uh, the position, the, the marking T lined up with this notch here. That means the crankshaft's in time. And I got both the camshafts um, in and I sort of just uh, put the timing chain around them. Uh, so, but some of the camshafts, they are sort of like lifted up a little bit because the lobes are trying to depress the valves. So don't worry too much, because when you put the cam camshaft holders on and you start bolting them down, it will compress the camshaft down. But just, um, you've got to do these up in stages. I'll show you that bit in a second. But you've got to make sure that when you put in the camshafts in, you want them uh, lined up so that they're in time. So you want the intake one, that little notch there, to be flush with the top of the cylinder head and the exhaust one there to be flush with the top of the cylinder head. Um, so once you've got your marking T lined up at the, there, and both of these are flush like that, you know that the engine's now in time. It took some fettling around, sometimes it, it was like one notch out, so I had to sort of like move the camshaft around a little bit and then put the chain back over. Um, but you, you know, you just have a fettle around with it, but you, it's imperative you make sure that all the markings are correct otherwise the engine will be out of time and you could do massive engine damage if it's out a lot or it just won't run right even if it's one too foul it's going to run like crap so you want to make sure it's all in time um in terms of bolting down the camshaft holders you, you know, they're really easy on this bike they're all numbered so if i come here they're all in numerical order of what one do you want to be tightening down so one two and then you've got three four five, six, seven, eight. And you just want to do it in about three stages. So you just bring it down all nice and even. Um, and then, yeah, and then you talk him up to a final torque of 12 newton meters. So once they're all, the camshaft holders are all flush with the top of the head, you do a final torque of 12 newton meters. And same thing for the exhaust camshaft. And then once that's done, then you can put your top guide back on. So once they're down, you, uh, these bolts will obviously not be there, but you put this back on, and again, you talk these down to 12 newton meters. Um, so yeah, that's about it really. So now, obviously the timing chain's still slack because I'm now about to put the tensioner in, so I'll show you how to do that. So when putting in the timing chain tensioner, uh, on this particular one, it has a center screw there, just a flat-headed screw, and when you wind this screw clockwise, it brings this plunger back in. Uh, you can't physically push it in once it's already out. So you screw this in clockwise, the plunger will retract back in, and then you wanna hold the screw. If you let go, the plunger's just gonna fly out. So you wanna hold the screw, and then you wanna be putting in the actual timing chain tensioner, and then you would bolt it into the engine when you release the screw, it will uh, it will then the plunger will fly out and then give the correct tension to the timing chain. I'll uh, I'll show you what I mean when I say it winds it in. So this is what I mean. So I've got the uh, screw wound clockwise. You can see the plunger's retracted, and now what I want to be doing whilst holding this is putting in the timing chain tensioner and then screw bolting it to the engine, um, and then release the the timing the screw, and the plunger will retract. If I release the screw, I'll show you. See what I mean? It flies out. So it's a tricky job. Um, I definitely need two hands to be doing this, but you sort of get the idea. You screw it in, in the center, it retracts the plunger, put it in the engine and then let go and it will come out. So I'm gonna do that now. Right, so now the cam chain tensioner's back in. Um, you, uh, It does say on the service, like the repair instructions, you should be replacing the gasket but it's up to you if you want to do that. I mean, if it's torn or ripped and that, then obviously it's just going to leak oil, but you, you know, just have a look. If the gasket survived, then use your own common sense and go from there. It also says about replacing the ceiling ring also. It's up to you if you want to do that for this bit here. Um, now, I didn't mention actually, uh, when I was showing you when you wind in the screw and it retracts the, uh, the plunger, there is a stop at all. So what you would do when taking this out before you do any other job, when you're just when you're just taking the cam chain tensioner out, you would undo that nut or the screw, 
you would turn in the screw clockwise so it would release the plunger and then you would put in a stopper tool there and it would stop the, the actual uh, cam chain tension of flying out as you sort of uh, undo the, the cam chain tension of it. It's, you know, you can just do it the way I showed you, so it's a bit fiddly, but it saves you having to buy the tool. It does say it could potentially cause cam chain damage, but I suppose that's highly unlikely, but you do you, whatever you want to do. Probably better safe than sorry. But um, anyway, so the cam chain tension is back in. Uh, I've uh, To verify that the engine still stayed in time, you want to give the engine a good few rotations like so. This is just a 14mm socket on a ratchet, by the way. And then what you want to do is and then line up the T after a good few turns. And when the T is in line at the bottom of the crank there to the notch at the top, so you can see that the T is in, well, probably could go a little bit more clockwise with that. So once the T is in line, you want to be seeing that, um, let's back the back a bit. So once the, the crankshaft's in line, you want to make sure that your top camshafts are all in time also. So let me just go around a couple more times so it's a bit slightly off there. So that's in line at the bottom, so the notch at the top. And you want to be making sure that your lines here are also in time. And if you was to turn it, so if I was to do another road, just one rotation. And if your markings are facing inward, that means you're 180 degrees out. So you want to be, just turn it around one more time. And your markings should be facing outward and flush with the top of the head like they are. So we're in line at the bottom, we're flush there and flush there. So that's all good. So the next thing to do is to be putting on back in the cover. So I'm gonna be putting this cover back in, tightening that up. And you are, I removed these bolts because I assume that this cover had to come off, it doesn't. So I can put these bolts back in. Um, by the way, the can chain tensioner bolts, they torque up to 10 newton meters. Um, so once, all of the covers are back on. The next thing we'll be putting on the rocker cover. So I'll just put all the cam cover at the top, put that in, put that on, and then uh, I'll find out the torque specs in a minute. But you really, you should be replacing the gasket. It's up to you if you wanna just obviously use common sense. If it's all hard and brittle and cracking, obviously replace it. But if it's relatively good condition, you may be able to get away with reusing it. But it's important that you put some sealant around here obviously make sure it's all oil free just put some rtv on these corners here when you're bolting them even with a new gasket it just stops it leaking oil around them sections anyway i'm going to get all this back together and i'll uh i'll see you in a minute right so the cylinder head cover's all back on um i've just run it down with a gun but it does say on the service manual i'm reading uh, to tighten the triangular bolts first and then i'm just doing a crisscross pattern really um that's how i would do it uh it does say to tighten them up to 10 newton meters also and if the seals are damaged in the cylinder head cover they'll have to be replaced um obviously as i mentioned before you want to be putting a bit of rtv around here on these semicircular bits and the same around that side i'm going to be putting some rtv on there so just because that's where it's more likely to leak if it does even with a new gasket, you want to be putting some there. Uh, so that's it, really. So that's as far as I can really get. The next stage, obviously, as we know this engine's knackered, I want to be actually removing the engine completely, ready for the, the new engine that's coming. So, uh, but that'll be another video, because it's going to be a while yet until that engine turns up. But um, it's really, I mean, half the engine removal job's done, because, I mean, all the carburetors are out of the way, air boxes out all the hoses are out, so really, it's not too much more to remove it, it's just gonna be a series of multi-plugs and the actual bolts holding it to the actual frame, the engine to the frame, so really, it's not that much more work to get it out. But uh, a shame this engine's knackered, it's just, I'm glad I ordered a new engine, because when, as you, when I was saying earlier, talking up the 
cylinder head bolts. One of them just, the thread gave way, so that would have been an absolute nightmare if I'd bought a gasket, talk, trying to talk down the cylinder head and that just let go. So really it's just better off buying, like getting a second hand engine, I hope anyway, because there's just too many things wrong with this one. But anyway, lads, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll um, I'll do a little, uh, like a take you with me sort of video with uh, engine removal and installation. And uh, hope you learnt something. I mean, it ain't really been a how-to, but just because of the nature, it's all gone a bit pear-shaped. But um, hopefully, you took some away from took something uh, away from the information I give you. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one.